Gliders are an awesome way to start off as a pilot and I'm very lucky to be able to fly them in the real world. Recently, I've been testing out gliders in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and in this video, I'd like to take you along with me for a test flight. I started gliding at the age of 15 and I really cannot recommend it enough if you're considering getting it into aviation. Some of my best flights were in the Alps where the views can be absolutely stunning. And now, with the technology behind Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, I have an opportunity to recreate some of my experiences from the real world in a flight simulator. So what we're about to perform here is a winch launch, which is one of the ways that you can get a glider into the air despite the fact that they have no engine. A winch launch involves a kind of tractor vehicle at the other end of the runway, which pulls the glider into the air through a cable. I'm going to be honest with you, the first time I did one of these in the real world, it terrified me. The glider we're going to be testing out is this Freeware DG-808. This aircraft is part of the same family as the DG-300, which is an aircraft that I happen to have flown a lot in the real world. There's a link down below if you're interested in this, and I'd like to say a huge thanks to everyone involved in its development. As we connect the virtual cable to our aircraft, you'll see that our pilot gives a thumbs up. We do this in the real world as well, and it's to let the person attaching the cable know that we've completed our checks and that we're ready to launch. As the cable starts pulling, you can see that it only takes a couple of seconds for the aircraft to get airborne, which is completely true to life. Once we're airborne, you'll see that it kind of feels like the aircraft is getting tugged forward, which is also completely true to the real world. Especially on a gusty day, or if the winch engine isn't running entirely smoothly, sometimes the cable will slack and then suddenly tighten up again, which can give the uncomfortable feeling that you're being thrown forward. This is a really nice effect, and it's very cool to see it implemented in the simulator. The difficult thing about the winch launch is that it's challenging to gauge the attitude of your aircraft due to the steep climb angle. So what you usually have to do is glance left and right to make sure that each wing is more or less the same distance above the horizon, meaning that you're flying wings level. The entire launch only lasts about 2-3 to three minutes, and once we're at the top of the winch there are a couple of items that we have to perform. The first is to make sure that we've trimmed the aircraft and are maintaining airspeed. The second is to pull this yellow ball, which will release any parts of the cable that may still be attached to the aircraft, such as the fuse. The third is to double check that our spoilers are still locked and haven't accidentally opened during the launch or the release of the cable. This is of course a little bit redundant in a flight simulator. And finally, we can also raise our gear. In the real world, the mechanical force of your hand is enough to pull the gear into the aircraft, and so there is no need for an electric motor or anything like that. Once we've done this, we can then start looking out for other aircraft that may have launched before us and start looking for our first thermal. Now that the cable is released, we are completely reliant on the aircraft's energy and the atmosphere. The way gliders maintain their speed is by continuously descending relative to the air around them. If you look at the forces in this diagram, lift, drag and weight, you can see that if the aircraft is descending, we can add all the forces up and find that there is no net force on the aircraft. This means that our velocity will stay constant and we can carry on flying. This is very similar to you riding a bike down a hill without the need to pedal. If the aircraft wouldn't be descending, there would be nothing to compensate for drag and the aircraft would slowly start to lose speed until it stalls. Because gliders are so efficient, the lift force is actually way bigger than the drag force, so in reality, gliders can fly for huge distances without losing that much altitude. And this is also reflected in Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is the reason that gliders are one of the only aircraft in the world which deploy speed brakes on approach. For the DG-808, every meter it descends, it flies 45 meters forward. This corresponds to a glide angle of only 1.3 degrees, which is basically almost flat. Now even though gliders need to be descending constantly to keep their speed, there is still a way for them to climb in the atmosphere. If you consider what happens when wind hits a mountain, you'll see that the air is forced upwards. If the air is moving upwards at the same speed that our aircraft is descending, then relative to the ground, our aircraft will not be losing altitude. Keep in mind though that relative to the air, the aircraft will still be descending. A good way of thinking about this is to imagine an updraft as a box of air. Even though the aircraft is descending within this box, if the box is moving upwards, then from an outside observer's point of view, it will look like the aircraft is climbing, even though the aircraft feels like it's descending. And you can see this in the simulator here. The beeping that you can hear is the sound of an instrument called the variometer, which measures how quickly I'm descending or climbing relative to the ground. Since there is wind coming from the right, it's being pushed up by this mountain and therefore also causing my glider to climb in the atmosphere. 
By using nature to your advantage like this, you can keep on flying for hours and hours and even cover hundreds if not thousands of kilometers. It's also a fantastic feeling in the real world to know that your plane is being powered purely by the atmosphere. It's what makes gliding a real adventure because you never know exactly where you'll end up and each flight can be totally different from the previous one. The cockpit of the DG-808 is very similar to what I'm used to in the real world. Over on the left you've got your flap and speed brake handles as well as the gear. A huge problem in real life is that now and again a glider pilot will either forget to deploy their gear or not lock the gear properly. This isn't massively dangerous but is mainly just a huge pain to deal with to repair the glider after it lands on its belly. Flaps are useful for a glider because they allow you to make the aircraft more efficient depending on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to fly a long distance, let's say in between two thermals, then you can even use negative flaps to be able to fly faster without causing too much drag. On the other hand, if you're trying to fly as slow as possible to make use of an updraft, then you can use positive flaps instead. And all of this seems to be simulated properly in Microsoft Flight Simulator. As for the instruments, you can see here that we've got a nice moving map which also tracks the history of our updraft. I've actually never flown with one of these in the real world, but I can imagine that they are extremely useful in locating updrafts and making sure that you're centered within your thermal. The instrument can also show basic information on waypoints which can help you make decisions on when to start your next leg and for example help you decide if you should maybe stick around in some updraft for slightly longer before you start your final journey home. On the right hand side of the cockpit we've got these metal levers which can be used to dump any water ballast before our landing. Counterintuitively, gliders are sometimes filled up with water to make them heavier. This is only done when you're trying to fly really long distances and has a similar effect to negative flaps, meaning that they help the aircraft become more efficient when you're flying at higher speeds. You've also got an adjustable microphone which you can place in front of your mouth. I once forgot about this and accidentally sat on this microphone instead of placing it in front of me and spent a solid 15 minutes trying to figure out why nobody could understand me on the radio. And finally, we've got these two handles here which are used to lock the canopy. The red one is the emergency handle which functions kind of like an ejection seat. If something went seriously wrong, let's say you crash into another glider, you can use this handle to unlock the canopy completely and then push it upwards so that it gets removed by the wind. If you're lucky, you can then escape from your aircraft and then parachute to safety. Finally, as we come into land, it's worth briefly talking about the flight dynamics. Something that affects gliders a lot is that when you try to roll them, they will yaw in the opposite direction. When you deflect the ailerons, the aileron that is deflected downward will cause significantly more drag than the one that is deflected upwards. The effect of this is called adverse yaw and it's particularly prominent in gliders because of their long wings and aspect ratio. I've got to say that I find X-Plane and Condor slightly better at modeling this since I never really found myself having to use a lot of rudder in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Whereas in the real world, glider pilots have to use a lot of foot or rudder when they enter or exit a turn. This is also the reason why you can see this little piece of string on the canopy, because it tells you when you need to use more or less rudder depending on the incoming airflow. Although in my opinion the flight dynamics are not entirely there yet, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 can really help you in learning to thermal as well as navigating and identifying landmarks. I had a lot of fun trying this out and if you think I deserve it, feel free to join my channel and help me out by interacting with this video down below. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.